Okay, um, so this lecture is um, Unit 1, Part 2, the Introduction of Maintenance Management, and we can continue. Okay, here we're looking at the types of maintenance activities. And we're going to put it into three categories. First one is reactive maintenance or corrective maintenance. And this is you pair and fix when something goes wrong, failure, okay? Um, this is the prevented maintenance. You do before. Predicted maintenance, we calculate what can happen in the future based on the historic data. Okay, so we know what to do and have any kind of surprises to maintain the system. So that's how we categorize systematic maintenance. Okay? Calculate, predict, and we study the system inside out so we know when something happens to do. Or calculate when something can happen and alter okay, um, the system, replace the system components so that that something cannot happen at the predicted time. So we usually do the predicted time, keep the system running. This one is out of control. Um, somebody intentionally picks <laughs> Okay, so at that time it's out of control. And you have to just go in and fix it. Stop the production system and fix it. So lost, right? You, you lost um, profit. You have to stop the production system. Production system, you don't stop. Because you're making products that will go to market. Don't think about products that coming on little by little. And they're all clean. Distribution, you don't want to you don't get late. Okay? So this is our enemy. And make sure that you realize production and manufacturing is in billions and billions of pieces or smaller products like Two pays of cups, so you know, soda, I can't. Spoons, you know, all of that. So, think everything, everything that is in your tree. Uh, so they're producing at you know, a faster rate ever than you can ever imagine. Yeah, you have to visit the factory to see them. American factories are, we only produce a uh, Bigger, bigger things right here. So all others, it's there in China, India, Southeast Asia. They are making all little pieces, yeah. Minor, non-important uh, products, but that you use daily, yeah. Here is like we make tanks, tanks, sorry, military tanks, you know, make the military machine weapons. Airplanes, helicopters, all kinds of big production here. RVs. So great that you're thinking, you know, that production system is not, not that fast, okay? Because the bigger the product, the rate is going into a different standard rate. So that's not the point. The point is you don't want to stop the production system because you profit okay and you jeopardize the distribution chain so total productive maintenance we're okay that's from the uh, unit one part previous lecture we're dealing with this two preventive and predictive okay but we don't want this uh, demand failure. This, if something happened, know that it's intentional and we can be able to spot it. Why? Because our total maintenance is effective. 
Okay, so therefore, if got a reactive, corrected mean of its meaning, it's temperate. System is temperate. If you don't have prevented predicted maintenance and or total production maintenance is not on in your system, okay, it would be very difficult to 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 understand what's going on in your system, whether it is a system failure on its own or compliance failure on their own. Somebody missing around with it, okay? So the make sure. Uh, category so maintenance activity to be in effect okay uh, through these programs again no businesses do this okay especially the small businesses don't do this okay because they don't want to hire expert okay on um, any other products and pay money for that they just uh, hires it's whatever they do on their routine and they don't need it business is small but real the manufacturing industry okay that is supplying world, that you don't this to okay cost them less than this okay so let's get into one by one theoretical so reactive reactive maintenance so this repair was required after the equipment failure has occurred. Okay? So it usually is a high priority because you have to go fix it right away and interfere with regular schedules. Okay? This is affect the business negatively. Therefore, we don't want to look at the maintenance or corrective maintenance. Okay? And again, the time. This type of maintenance happen after the equipment failure happened. Okay. So proactive maintenance management program is another one loosely used. Okay, and we use this especially to reduce the reactive maintenance. Alright, next one. Preventive maintenance. To prevent and fix the problems before the failures. And all that failure happens by placing the components or deteriorating on our components before the failure happened because of that on our components. So we're going to prevent and fix before failures. Check the system design, install installation of the equipment in the system to do checking, 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 checking. Keep an accurate history of the equipment so you understand. Okay, the equipment events. and then so if you understand and it's before you know how to repair. Do routine inspection, do the upkeep, and do the service. Okay, so do cleaning your schedules, location, and overhaul. So you have to do all of this to prevent and fix the problem. And the key point failure that's we that preventive means. All right, next is predictive maintenance. Predictive is PDM, so all kinds of yeah, uh, different terms. So don't don't get confused. And I was asking all of it and everything so to predict possible equipment failure so we use since it we're predicting how to use, think every possible so that's statistical tools yeah you think 360 degree around every possible thing that can happen to that system and the since you are studying all the possible things that can happen to that system and the you know when something happens, how to fix it. You know when each part is not bad. You know the material that equipment no function of the system or work so that you can obtain the system. Yeah. So that's all come from the systematic calculation using data. Okay. 
various instruments, using various instruments. That is the studying the system. So to predict the possible failure, study system inside out. And therefore we know tank or that predictive maintenance program tests. You have to test vibration, test chemical organs, test the temperature of them, test the optics, which is your optical tools, and then your gauges, audio gauges. So do all kinds of stuff to maintain your system in predictive maintenance. Preventive, predictive maintenance is under total productive maintenance, okay? And you have reactive and corrective maintenance here. Proactive is watching reactive or corrective maintenance. So now let's get into preventive, predictive, PM and PTM. Okay, so what they do is they ID. This is identify or an ID me identification. So ID that requires a level. So PDM, predictive maintenance, is to develop efficient and reliable production system. Okay? We want the system to be efficient, we want the system to be completely dependable, reliable. So that's what we understand. That system, every part, of it, every process of it, every operation of it, everybody who is touching the system to understand. That's predictive maintenance. Any kind of variation of the system you need to understand so that the system will be at all work in condition all times. Yeah, those are our maintenance goals. ROI is a business term, so important for manufacturing because you have to make fit, otherwise, you don't need to do business. You have Losses, okay? So that's the returns on investment. You invest a certain amount of money and you expect you're going to get triple, double, okay? Or you're going to get quadruple or times 10, 100 folds, okay? So businesses, so for quality improve, long and reliable life, improve safety, better customer service, okay? All of that is necessary to keep our really really high okay so if you want profit if you want your product to stay in your market you have to have a quality in your products okay and that quality shouldn't be stalled or stagnant it's got to be so give a little of this and look at that and, you know so to keep the customer interest in your product if you get the same thing then it'll on it anymore. So you have to have some sort of variation. They keep coming to your product. And they have to be reliable. Okay, they have to have a certain life cycle. And they have to be safe. Okay, so improve the safety. And you have to have a customer service really good. This is what America is struggling. So all the customer service is based on a low uh, paid a workforce, okay, and usually occupied by actually non-native speaker, okay. I am a non-native speaker, okay. Um, so that, okay, customer service, um, Usually, people issue over it, right? Then nobody wants to take or anyone because you have to wait 45 minutes to get to a, a human customer service. And um, when you get to the customer service and that person don't speak okay, in the way you stand, so get issue up, okay? So that's what I study right now that we're facing, okay, we're facing a lot of customer service issue in all of the businesses, okay? not only manufacturing, but all of the businesses.
So that is a one factor that can affect the return of investment. Okay. So you can't get the better customer service provide that by any from to other product. Okay. So here this is the international TPN, so that's a total productive maintenance institute data. Okay, what they do is study. Okay? And here you have three different tables showing you the corrective, preventive, and predictive maintenance status. Okay? And they compare different industries here. Okay. And this data is for the America region. So you can see for assembly, right, predicted maintenance, okay, we do only 29%. But when you look at the competitive advantage, the world manufacturing data for other countries, they are doing 53% PM, okay? So we're kind of still low in and the maintenance is that's because of the surplus of so here in the United States. So you don't need to do uh, maintenance okay, of your system that seriously. Okay? For the world, they don't have they don't have enough equipment so, or the parts of so like do here in America. So they have to maintain their manufacturing system seriously so that nothing breaks down. And uh, to lengthen the life cycle of each equipment, okay, by doing housekeeping application all that. Uh, that's because you're seeing this gap is because of the ability of the parts, placement parts, okay, to the system. There is, they don't have it, yeah, so that would to maintain by doing all the routine work uh, seriously. Same thing, corrective verbs. Okay, it's corrective. Look at how this, the percentage is so high and it's on 69. We do corrective, meaning like do maintenance all the time, something breaks in our system. Look at the world, they don't do corrective things, okay? Meaning like they protect their system for something breaks. Okay. Okay. The last one is a predictive. They don't do at all. See how low percentage is over there. They study the system inside out. Here we do not study. America we don't study. Okay. Because we have things and we can afford okay, that, how can I say, the lack of knowledge uh, because of the availability of money and things. Okay? So therefore, you don't study the system because if your system fails, all you have to do is just replace because we have to replace it. We have people to replace it and we don't care. But then sometime in the future, we have to do it. Our world is going into that direction. So our resources okay, is not, uh, it's not enough right, to afford this, this type of trend in the future. You can do that certain generation, maybe two to three generations, but when more than three, four, five generation, you don't know, your own system, that lack of knowledge will get to you. Meaning like people who don't know how to do the predictive will be replaced by people who want to do the predictive pay on maintenance study. So there is a risk of not practicing it and uh, you can survive for a certain generation, but it won't be long term, okay? So in the future, you will be seeing, this is like 
until I think 2007. So they always go with 10 years data. So you will definitely see changes in these percentages. And another thing that you need to know, this is for manufacturing. And we don't have a lot of manufacturing other than serious products, okay, military products, air products. So we only have those types of manufacturing, which is not comparable to little, little manufacturing, okay? Like plates, and, uh, toys, and clothes, and makeup, cosmetics, okay? So all of that, the world, they have manufacturing plans to these small products than American manufacturing businesses. Okay? So that we have to know that thing. So anyway, all you need to know is your ROI. It's what you need to do to get this high. Then your preventive and the predictive maintenance program. We identify the equipment and the pilot maintenance. Okay, if you know that much, it's okay. Predictive and efficient reliability system. That's what we want it. So the study system inside. Okay. All right. So this is just for reading. Okay. They don't cover that. So at, at this school. So all you have to do is just read through it if you buy textbook. If you don't buy the textbook, it's okay. You can still search it okay, just for because they're related to organization. And there are many different kinds of organization. So we don't want to get into it. Okay, this will be covered by separate subject organizational culture if you want to get into that direction. Okay, usually in the business major, but a good business. Administrator, we don't need this. Yeah. So that just supplements maintenance department organization, centralized disadvantages for centralization, decentralization, the combined system, okay, and the changing strategies. So if you think about the previous, okay, on three tables, that's related to, okay. So what's I want you to just the trend. That we have last 10 years, but same as the trends that we'll be getting next 10 years. Okay. Okay, this is the last slide. Here we're looking at maintenance in the service industries. So, service industries for transportation stuff, like the public private vehicles, for aviation, amusement, things like that. So this thing they do like like the Disney, okay, for the parking center. Plus maintenance also they have to do maintenance for that system. These are just uh, service systems. So often maintenance activity they also do PN and PDN. And what's important for the service industry because you're dealing with the people have to do follow up activities, okay? So that's because you don't want loss of life, injury, okay? Manufacturing is, we, we have operators, but they're not, okay? The processes and operations, they're not affecting the operators, okay? They're only affecting the products, okay? So for service industry, there, there are many people okay, in that system, so you don't want um uh, you don't want anything to happen to these people who are involved in the systems especially amusement and understand it and pay components in the amusement uh, vehicles i would say robots or the machine pay their assets is it's, it's kind of like used by the people this is the amusement park so you have to make sure all of the machines are up and running in that system and won't harm anybody won't give any kind of injury okay um to 
to the people who say, okay, these machines and investment products. So therefore, every maintenance in the service industry, they have to do the follow-up, okay? Uh, follow-up is heavier in service industry, the, the manufacturing industries, because of the direct, okay, uh, effect the life people there for injury. So here is the example table, and this is the U.S. civil aviation accident because of the, in, you know, maintenance. Okay. And when you take a look at it, this one is 1995 to 2000. And you can see number of accidents is this much. Okay. Here, accidents with fatalities mean somebody died, life, a loss of life. Fatal is serious, minor, none. Total injury is this much. And this is the number of people involved in it. And so therefore, maintenance is so important that you should not take it lightly. Okay? Why? Because it can cause loss of life, injury. So therefore, follow up is essential and important. Okay, that's it for this chapter.